Welcome to Trinity Church at Uvila on this, the sixth Sunday of Easter. Delighted to have you worshiping with us today. We'll begin our worship today with a familiar song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. Somebody and said, Yes, mommy's in the hospital. 
And the twins and Billy and Sally and Joe and the dog and Daddy and I are home alone. Feels like that sometimes. It doesn't matter who you with. Sometimes we just feel alone. And Jesus knew that was going to be a problem for us. And so he said, don't worry about that. I'm going to leave you uh, with a comforter. Uh, the paraclete is what theologians call it. Uh, the spirit is what we know it better as. Uh, that he'll provide us a spirit which is his essence, his presence with us. Uh, last week when we uh, uh, spoke about the scripture, Jesus was saying, I have to go to the Father. And I remember Thomas and Philip were saying, well, wait a minute, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way to get there? And Jesus said, I, I'm the way and the truth and the life. Uh, this is on, this text, this uh, scripture lesson is taken on the eve of his departure from them. And uh, he's saying, I, I know it's going to be difficult, but don't worry. I will leave a helper with you. God will send somebody, the Spirit, our own spirit, God's spirit, my spirit, to be present with you in a way that will give you peace. Uh, look for that. Uh, we're only two weeks away from uh, when we celebrate Pentecost uh, in the church. The, uh, the, remember the, after Jesus' death and just shortly after that when the disciples were gathered together in the upper room and all of a sudden the, the Flames of fire appeared and the rushing wind came in and they were filled with this amazing spirit that gave them courage and strength and wisdom to go out and be Christ's disciples. Uh, so we'll celebrate that. But today, my purpose is to help you see that that is a spirit. That is what Jesus promised us. That he's going to send a spirit to be present with us and that spirit remains with us constantly. You may feel alone at times, uh, you may feel like you're all by yourself, but the good news is that that spirit stays with us. It's a promise of God. So all our job really is is to try to open our eyes and see it, recognize it, take advantage of it, use it, feel it. Uh, when I used to teach confirmation, uh, the, the kids uh, used to love to get into that because I would always tell them, that. now the Greek word for that is ruach. Spirit, they always, they always, for some reason, they remember ruach. I guess they liked the way that sounded. Uh, but that's a word that in Greek is translated wind or spirit or breath, all three. I like what Barbara Brown Taylor, who was a uh, pastor, said. She's an Episcopal pastor who said, when Christ died, it was like, um, like that last breath of air just must have hung in front of him so full of passion, so full of life that it didn't just dissipate like other breaths do, but became a mighty rushing wind that filled the upper room and that still fills our lives today. That's a good way to think about that. The Spirit, is a kind of, you can't see it, you can't put your hands on it, but you can sure feel its presence and know its power. Uh, our job is to just try to recognize it. I can, rem I can imagine, uh, you remember the these Australian guys who say, hey, mate, that's the spirit. I'm going to keep repeating that phrase today because I want you to say, oh, yeah, that's the spirit. When I see this happen, oh, I can say that's the spirit in my life. For instance, uh, when you find unusual wisdom that comes in your life, you can say that's the spirit. Uh, wisdom's not the same as Knowledge. I love the story about uh, four people went up in one of these uh, single-engine airplanes. The pilot, uh, uh, a businessman, uh, a Boy Scout, and a pastor were all flying together to some event. When the uh, the pilot said, "Uh oh, we've got engine trouble," and after a few minutes of struggling with, it, he said, "We're going to crash." And the bad news is, we've only got three parachutes. And he said, uh, "And uh, my wife is." Expecting me home, and I've got kids there too, so I'm taking one. See you. And he grabbed a parachute and jumped out. And uh, they, the three remaining looked at it and said, Well, there's two parachutes left. Well, the businessman said, uh, I'm sorry, but people, many people say that I'm the smartest man they've ever met, maybe the smartest man in the world. And uh, it would be a terrible loss for not only for my company, but for the whole world if I were to die. So he grabbed one and jumped. And the pastor then looked at the Boy Scout and said, look, I, I'm old, you're young, I've lived my life, you take the last shoot and jump. And the Boy Scout said, 
take it easy, Pastor. He said, the smartest man in the world just grab my backpack and jump. Don't you see that there's a lot of those events that happen where you, you can have all the knowledge in the world, but somehow you lack wisdom? Uh, when you have moments where you can discern uh, something more clearly, when you have moments when things look amazingly clear, even in the midst of all the chaos and confusion around, you might say, that's the Spirit. That's the Spirit. Uh, I like the, there's a story about the mayor of uh, West Berlin. Right after they divided Berlin into East and West, there was a lot of animosity between the two. People thinking well, they had it better here or over there. On one occasion, shortly after this division, the wall was put up. Uh, the uh, East Germans, I don't know who it was, they decided, let's just dump our garbage over the fence into West Germany. And they did, by the truckload, just dumped it over the wall. And the people in West Germany were pretty irate. They, they begged their mayor, let's do something to pay them back. Come on, we got to get even. And the mayor of West Germany said, okay, this is what we're going to do. Bring flowers, all the flowers you can gather. And they did, by the truckload. They brought flowers from all over West Germany and they dumped them over the fence. This huge, beautiful, fragrant mound that filled East Germany. And then they put up a sign on their side and said, uh, we each give what we have. Isn't that, isn't that wisdom? I mean, you can do something to escalate the war or you can do something that says, we're above that. Maybe we ought to live peacefully. What can we do to help you? I think that's wisdom in our lives. I'd love for you to uh, check out your life. When you're able to see clearly, when you're able to discern something, when you're able to love a little more deeply, when you're able to see the plight of those that are around you that so many people just don't want to see or they cannot see or will not see. That's wisdom. To be able to live abundantly, humbly, uh, so apart from the way the world lives, that's wisdom. And Jesus knows that. And he said, that's why I gave you the Spirit, so that you can be filled with that kind of wisdom. So when you see that happen in your life, say, that's the Spirit, mate. That's the Spirit. Uh, when you experience God's presence in a mighty way, I had a, we had a funeral for a dear friend of ours recently, and another dear friend who was attending that service said, I have been so distraught over this. I just can't imagine giving this precious friend up, and it's just been really bothering me. But when I sat down in the church and the pastor started delivering the message, she said, I was just filled with a sense of peace, and I knew everything was going to be all right. That's the spirit somehow gives us that kind of peace. That's the spirit that fills us to overflowing. Uh, Pastor Howard Olds uh, told of a dear friend of his, a businessman who was going through a real difficult time of depression. Normally he was a happy-go-lucky, outgoing, uh, laughing uh, friend of his, but now he was just in the dumps of depression. And so he went to his bedside and said, hear him are you okay? And he said, no, I, no I'm, I'm terrible. I think I've lost contact with God Almighty. And the pastor held his hand and said, I, I understand. He said, but maybe it's not your hold on the Almighty that'll get you through that. Maybe it's the Almighty's hold on you that will see you through this time. And Hiram shook his head and said, I hope that's right. It is right. God never turns loose of us. God never gives up on us. In fact, the psalmist put it well. In Psalm 139, uh, the psalmist says, Where can I go to get away from you? If I go to heaven, you're there. If I go down to the, to the depths of the earth, you're there. If I get up morning and go over seas, you're still with me. From night until the, the next night, you are with me constantly. I can never lose your presence. Psalms 
knows that's the way God is in our lives. Never gives up on us. Uh, another good story that happened recently on uh, some nature channel was filming uh, a documentary on black bears, and they caught sight of this little cub, which had obviously been orphaned. Um, they, they saw that the mother had not done well after the birth, and one little cub died immediately, and then uh, two weeks later, the mother died, and this little cub was orphaned. And so they kind of followed it as much as, as best they could with the camera. Uh, also saw the mountain lion that was stalking this little black bear because this is the easy lunch for a, a mountain lion with no parent bear around. But this little bear ran into a, uh, a great big male bear. And the male bear kind of looked around like, where's mama? And realized that probably this little cub didn't have a mama. And so after a little bit of playful nudging, he kind of patted it on the butt. And that was kind of like the adoption papers being signed and sealed. And sure enough, everywhere that the, the, the great big male bear took off and went, little bear followed behind. And the big male bear taught it how to fish and how to catch insects and stuff for, for food and how to scratch its back on a tree. And they were a great couple together. After following these along for a while, on one day the camera caught that the, the papa bear and the cub got separated. And uh, the little bear was running around and crying and hollering, but no papa bear around. And then they caught sight of the mountain lion on the opposite side of the stream, and you just knew what's going to happen. If you, have, if you had kids with you, you covered their eyes, because this is going to be ugly. Uh, the, when the uh, little cub caught, light, caught sight of the mountain lion, it did what it saw papa bear doing all the time. It stood up on its back legs, and it barbared its teeth, and it tried to let out a growl that would reverberate through the, the forest, but it was more like eee! And then they panned back to the mountain lion, which turned, cowered its head, and ran. <laughs> you can see the little cub going, wow, that's amazing. Which, what the little cub didn't see is about 15 feet behind it in some woods, the papa bear had appeared. And he was standing up on his hind legs with his teeth bare like, don't you touch a thing. The little cub never saw that. Papa Bear didn't have to say a word, but his presence was enough. That's, I think, a great picture of the way God does with us. God is constantly present with us. Through the Spirit, God is constantly present with us, giving us incredible power that we didn't even know we had. Uh, there was a little boy who'd gone on a camping trip with his dad and uh, they decided to make a fire and he was great with that and they wanted to push a rock up to the fire but he pushed and he pushed and he couldn't get it go. And his dad said, well, use all your resources. And he said, I am using all my resources. And he finally sat down crying because he couldn't do it. He said, you haven't used all your resources. You haven't asked me. And the two of them pushed the rock up to the fire. Maybe that's our inspiration to say, you know, Sometimes we don't have to do it alone. Christ is with us. The Spirit is present with us in a mighty way to help us with all the things that we need. Every time you see that power in your life, have you ever experienced that power to love people that are difficult to love? Power to feed some folks who are hungry that other folks don't see a need to, to help out? Uh, power to be able to make a difference in some social situation. Power in your relationships to be able to heal, to forgive, and to help. It's amazing. And when you see that happening in your life, I want you to say, ah, that's the Spirit. That's the Spirit. Uh, all kinds of wisdom and power and, and presence come our way because of the work of the Spirit in our lives. It's amazing that God fills our lives to overflowing, uh, gives us the ability to do what we cannot do ourselves. That's the Spirit. Uh, in the days that are coming, particularly during these days of Pentecost that are upon us now, I want you to be able to look into your life and say, oh, that's the Spirit working in me. Christ has promised to be present with us, to give us just what we need so that we shall not want. 
want you to lean upon that and rest upon that and celebrate that to know that that spirit is present with you doing mighty things. We're going to sing a song now that celebrates the work of the spirit in our life. It's called Rushing Wind. Remember Ruach, wind, breath, spirit. Uh, we're going to be talking about that spirit that moves into our lives like a rushing wind. Rushing wind blow through me with your tender breeze. Touch out the depths of my heart like a fire through me here on my knees. Consume every dark and
You know all the prayers that each of us are praying individually. Hear them and respond in your mercy. And because you know even the deepest things in our hearts, we pray that you will hear those deep things as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to close with a uh, hymn that you know well, In the Garden. Uh, it was funny because I was looking for a hymn to, to sing, and I thought, oh, in the garden, you know, he walks with me and talks to me. It's just perfect for the message that I want to have with you today. And I also thought, and it starts just right. I come to the garden alone, which is kind of where we are with the COVID virus because of social distancing. Uh, come to the garden alone. And then I hear the voice of God. I didn't realize, I kind of did some Googling on that. And realized, that, that song was written in 1912 by a guy named Austin Miles. Uh, he was reading John 20. And he fell asleep. John 20 is where Mary Magdalene goes to the garden to anoint the body of Jesus. And uh, he had this most vivid dream about it. He said, I was like I was there. I saw Mary going to the tomb and Jesus speaking to her. And what joy filled her life. And he said, wow. And he got up and he wrote the words to in the garden. I had no idea that that's where those words came from. But they're still exactly right. Uh, you think you're going to the garden alone, but we're not really. Uh, it's a matter of us discerning more clearly that that spirit is with us. Uh, but the truth is that he walks with us and talks with us. And even when he urges us to leave the garden, that spirit goes with us. So I want you to remember and celebrate those things as we sing a familiar hymn, I come to the garden alone to end the garden. I come to the garden. Thank you.
love to write more verses to a song. So after I thought about that COVID virus thing, I wrote my own verse to In the Garden. I come to the garden alone because of social distancing and such. But there by my side was the spirit. I cried. He'd never left me. I was just out of touch. May you go forth in touch with the spirit that is certainly with you. God promised it. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and fill you with his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.